I've had a rather heavy day so far. I've done far too much giggling. Was reminded yet again that teenage bullies do indeed grow up and become older, more seasoned bullies who seek out human punching bags, emotionally speaking. So I'm feeling, emotionally speaking, rather wrecked. So I need some therapy. So I'm gonna sew a dress. I want it to be a pretty dress and I want it to be a pink dress. What good fortune. Pretty pink fabric and it's already pressed. I found this at the thrift store. I'm not usually attracted to such pinkness, but I don't know, there is something about it that said, make me into a pretty dress. Not literally. If, if that were to happen, I would, I would be concerned because I've been informed that fabric actually isn't supposed to do that. So, okay, I forgot what I was measuring. I'm measuring to see how many yards are here. I think it's three. Two yards, 27 inches, and it is 44 inches wide. As I was dreaming of something pink and puffy, I immediately went to the Selkie website to gain inspiration. I was limited in fabric, so I knew it wouldn't be super puffy, but I thought if I did a baby doll style, I might have just enough fabric. Scrolling through this website is an indulgence that I do not often allow myself because it is very dangerous. I want to make them all, all the designs, all the colors and prints of all the dresses and all their pretty puffy ruffled glory, and that is not possible, so I'll settle for one right now. Although these two dresses do live rent free in my brain, I may need to evict them. I did end up settling on the puff dress as my inspo, the short, fairly simple one, no ruffle on the hem or the sleeves. For the pattern, I was eco-conscious. I recycled, <laughs> meaning I used the pattern for my wallpaper dress and only had to alter it a little. This is what that pattern looks like. I lengthened the sleeve, shortened the bodice pieces, and divided the bodice front into two pieces and straightened out the neckline, saving a heck ton of time. Yes, I am so wise. Or lazy. You can pick. I cut those pieces out of some scraps left over from a chemise I just made, basted all the pieces together, and had a quick try-on. It fits super well, but it was way too long, so I adjusted that and then finalized the pattern. Or I thought I did. Here I am, having a moment of confusion, finally realizing that I adjusted the back and the front, but not the side front. After berating myself for wasting precious fabric, I apologized and forgave myself and said, hey, mistakes happen, and it's really not worth getting angry over. What's important is how we respond to and learn from said mistakes. Which is what I really wish I could have said to a couple of mean girls recently, but I decided to be like Elsa. On second thought, if I were being like Elsa, I probably actually would have told them that. It depends on how you look at it. So I adjusted that pattern piece and all was well. Alright, so these are the pieces that I came up with. Front, side front, and back. On the fold, cut two, cut two, same with the lining, and for reference, all the squares are inches. The only adjustment I had to make to the sleeve pattern was adding a little length. By the way, this was the soundtrack in the background while I was working. That little voice is so freaking cute. Anyway, I was really grateful to be able to use the exact same sleeve pattern, altering it in the easiest way possible. Now, onto the skirt. I had enough fabric left to cut out two rectangles on the fold, and then I wound up with a little bit of leftover fabric that was just enough to add about 14 inches to the skirt. It's not ideal to add such small sections into a skirt, but I really wanted as much puffiness as possible, so I decided to go ahead and do it to add a little bit more fullness, working with what we got. If you end up making the dress yourself and you have more fabric, it's going to be so much easier to just cut out three rectangles all the same size with one on the fold. I left one of the large rectangles on the fold, and the other one I cut into two pieces. Here's what my pieces ended up looking like, and here's how I connected them. Front on the fold goes in the middle, sew those edges to the side back pieces, sew those side pieces to the back, and then sew the center back up, but not quite all the way, more on that later. Now all the pieces were cut out, it was time to start sewing up the bodice. For the bodice, I used the method of interlining. Interlining is a form of interfacing. Instead of using actual interfacing, fusible or sewing, you can just use fabric and baste along the edges, making them one slightly sturdier pattern piece. I interlined the rose fabric, and then I also interlined the lining. So in total, I ended up cutting out four copies of the bodice, which may sound like dissipation to some, but I found it worth the time and effort. I then sewed them all together as you see them laid out here. Front is in the middle, I stitched the side front to the front, and then the side front to the back, after inserting the darts into the back pieces, of course.
right, the next step is I'm going to take the lining bodice and the bodice bodice and place them right sides together. Then I'm going to sew them together here, here, and here, but not here because that's for the sleeves to go through. So I'm going to attach the sleeves here. To here but I have to do it in between the layers but before I do that I have to sew a casing in the rest of the sleeve edge then I can insert the elastic and then then I can attach the sleeve in here and then I can sew here here and here okay I stitched the skirt sides all together to form one long rectangle, folded that in half, stitched that straight edge together, leaving about eight inches open at the top for the zipper. Okay, I really wanna finish the dress today and I think I'm gonna be able to, but I also really, really wanna color my hair. So I'm gonna to try to do them at the same time, which makes me very nervous because if I get anything on this light colored fabric, it is ruined. So I need to be really careful. But if I want to get this stuff accomplished, I have to multitask. Well, that didn't work out. It's the next day. Yesterday, I started the first part of my hair process. It's a two-part process. Started the first part and then got asked to come into work early. And I said yes, because I really need the hours. So I went to work with my hair half done. Now it is the next day. I'm working on part two of the hair process and I'm going to try to get a couple things done on the dress before I head to work again. Wish me luck. Okay, now that the center back seam of the skirt is sewn and a little bit is left open, I'm just going to gather all along the top edge two rows. And we're back. Finished coloring my hair, made it to work on time, did not leave on time. There were some challenges, the police were called, it was a whole thing, but I did make it home. It is now the next day and I'm ready to get back to work on this dress, almost ready. I'm gonna procrastinate just a little bit more. So come with me to the thrift store. That rhymed. There wasn't anything too exciting at the thrift store that day, but I did discover a couple of fun things even something pertaining to this current project. I had this idea to do a little addition to the dress. I wasn't sure if it was possible, but I wanted to try it, which merited a trip to my nearest craft store, which is actually Walmart. I needed some Mod Podge. Believe it or not, I have never used Mod Podge in my life. This was the wrong aisle. I found my way to the correct aisle, but someone was working there and I desperately wanted to avoid disturbing them. So I decided to do the rest of my shopping and then circle back later. The rest of my shopping included a trip to the electronic section to find some earbuds. I was hoping for the dollar earbuds, but even those are apparently locked in a case now, which I understand those are probably really easy to swipe, but that meant no earbuds for me because I am not going to go bother someone to unlock the case for me. My earbuds are still working just fine. I circled back to the craft aisle. It was entirely empty of earthlings, hooray. But then I was momentarily overwhelmed by the options. I took a deep breath and finally determined that this little bottle of Matte Mod Podge was probably the correct choice. Back from my travels. So the next step on the dress, I'm getting so close. I'm not sure if this is going to fit perfectly. Um, so what I want to do is baste the zipper in here and just make sure of uh, my seam allowance before I actually sew it onto the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and baste this in, try it on, and we'll see where we go from there. So I basted that zipper in, gave it a quick try on, and adjusted the back. 
Now we come to what the thrifted shoes were for. These are all of the scraps that I had left over. I wanted to try to make matching shoes by covering them with fabric. Was it a good idea? Since the shoes were a dark brown, they would show through the fabric, so I began painting them with some white acrylic paint and I let them dry for a bit while I went back to work on the dress. Okay, all that remains is to attach the skirt to the bodice, hem the skirt, put in the zipper, and it's finished. Really? Really? Okay, we are this close to being finished. Very exciting stuff. No! No, we're not, actually. I forgot. I never cut out skirt lining. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. For the skirt lining, I used this remnant of poly cotton. I cut out two rectangles 44 inches wide, and for the length, I made them just a couple inches shorter than the rectangles I cut out for the overskirt. I stitched the pieces together, but for one seam, I left the top part open about 8 inches, just like I did with the overskirt. Then I ran a big stitch all along the top edge of the skirt lining two times so it could be gathered up. I took a break from the dress and went back to work on the shoes. Using the scraps from the lining, I figured out a rough pattern and then cut it out of the rose fabric. This was definitely not my favorite part, but as it turned out, it was also not my least favorite part. I set to work with those fabric pieces in the Mod Podge and seasoned Mod Podgers, Mod Podges, please avert your eyes. I probably used it completely wrong, but from the moment I touched that stuff, I was over it and so ready to be finished, but I'm also extremely stubborn, so I kept going. But two words. Sensory nightmare. I will most likely not be using Mod Podge again, but hey, I tried it and satisfied my curiosity. This is how I left the shoes for the evening. <coughs> Attaching the skirt to the bodice. To distribute the gathers evenly, I like to divide the top of the skirt and the bottom of the bodice into four sections. I mark those sections off with pins or chalk, and then I match the sections of the skirt up to the sections of the bodice, pin them together, and pull the threads until the skirt sections fit into the bodice sections. Then I did what I should have done before gathering the skirt, but completely forgot. I cut out two strips of fabric about three quarter inches wide and nine-ish inches long. I then basted them onto the skirt where the eight inches was left open at the top. This would act as a stabilizer for the zipper. This would have been way easier had I done it before gathering, but you can't do everything in the perfect order. That would be really boring. After that, I stitched the gathered skirt to the bodice. Attaching the skirt lining was the same method, divide, pin, and gather to fit. The only differences were, one, the outer skirt would be sandwiched in between the bodice and the skirt lining, and two, I folded over the eight inches atop the skirt lining. This will kind of just float there, but other than that, same pinning and gathering dealio. A very discouraging moment in sewing where you're, you're sewing, you're being so careful, and then you realize you've gotten to the end of it, and... You ran out of bobbin thread. That's, that's it. That's all, that's as far as I made it and the rest of it. Now I have to repin it and, and re-sew. When attaching zippers, I always like to hand base them in before using the sewing machine. Sounds tedious, but it actually saves so much time and wear and tear on the fabric and everything matches up so well. Highly recommend. For finishing the inside of the bodice, you can do a slip stitch by hand, or you can kind of turn it inside out, do a lot of squishing and maneuvering, and use the sewing machine to sew right sides together and then flip it back out. It takes a bit of maneuvering and some muscles, but it looks pretty neat and tidy once you're finished, and it's a good option if you hate hand stitching. At the end of it, all I had to hand stitch was a little corner on both sides. I would say the main downside to this is if you have to go in and make alterations later, it is more work, but on the upside, it looks really neat and tidy and professional. Keeping the skirt hem simple, I turned both skirts under just a smidge and then one more smidge. But if you're making this dress, don't get too attached to that plan. So it did not turn out quite as puffy as I wanted it to. I knew that it wouldn't be super puffy because I didn't have enough fabric. However, I think I can do something to make it a little bit poofier. And so I'm gonna add some tool along the bottom edge of the lining to help it stick out a little bit more. Problem is I don't have any tool. So... I checked the thrift store. This was all the tool I found, but I didn't think I could make either of these colors work, so it was another trip to Walmart. Yep, twice in two days. But I located the tool, even paid for it, and was back in time for tea. I folded the tool and cut it lengthwise into three sections. Each section was doubled, so it gave me six sections in total. 
I then stitched those nearly invisible sections together end to end, being careful, oh so careful, to not twist the ginormous snake I was creating. Tool doesn't have a right or wrong side, which makes for a challenge, but it also doesn't fray, so finishing of edges is not necessary, so I guess there are points in its favor. I used some chalk to mark a line along the edge of the lining where I would attach the tool after it was gathered. Then I set to work running a big stitch all along the top edge of the snake, all 648 inches of it. Did you know that's roughly 18 yards? No, no, not roughly, exactly 18 yards. The only rough thing here was me having to sit still for that long and desperately hoping that my thread did not run out in the middle of the process. It would be the same method of gathering as with the skirt, except the amount of gathering would be far greater and it was nearly invisible. I'm sounding grumpy, aren't I? Tool is not my favorite. To put things into perspective, while I gathered, I watched a video of someone making an entire dress out of tool, and it made me feel better about my situation. I am almost finished pinning this. So excited to be finished. I actually have had fun making this. I was considering making this into a video where I made three Selkie-inspired dresses, just rapid fire, boom, boom, boom. But then I thought, oh, the detail will get lost. I wouldn't be able to really explain myself very well. I'd have to go really fast. And even then the video would end up being like 30 minutes long. So I thought, okay, then maybe I just divide it up and do a series, but I couldn't decide. So I put it to an Instagram vote and the votes came in. It was a tie. I also put it to a vote on YouTube. It was also a tie. Actually the bonus question that was on YouTube won. So still didn't help me answer my question. I did not get my wish fulfilled of having someone make my decision for me. <laughs> so I still have to make that decision and I think I'm gonna go with, I'm just gonna make one dress, one video, and then maybe I'll make more Selkie inspired dresses in the future. If that's something you'd like to see, maybe leave me a comment below, let me know. And comment which dress you would like to see me make because I like all of them and I kind of want to make all of them, but that's not realistic. So I'm going to have to narrow it down. Yay, so it's all pinned. Now I just have to sew it on. Woo! This really isn't that much tool, but this is all the tool I can handle. Yay. tried it on. Love how it fits. Love how it looks, except for the hem. I think it needs to be shorter. So I'm going to take it up about an inch and then it will be finished. The dress is finished. It is finally completely complete. It is now dark outside. It is rather late in the evening and I am about ready to crawl into bed. So I think I'll film a reveal tomorrow. I will admit, I am quite pleased with how it turned out. Not the shoes. They're okay if you don't look too close. The whole Mod Podge experience was educational. I likely won't be doing it again. But the dress turned out rather fabulous, I think. Especially for the price. Not counting the shoe part of the project, the supplies for the dress cost me about $8. But I did spend several hours working on it, and time is indeed a precious currency that should not be discounted. All in all, I'm happy with the result. And yes, I do want to make another one. What do you think? Which dress should I recreate next? Uh plane keeps flying by. There's a training school nearby, but um, he keeps flying by. I made a pretty pink dress. <laughs>